Welcome, everybody. This is Your Catholic Faith Reloaded, episode number five. I'm your host, Father Nelson Medina, this time broadcasting from St. Louis, Missouri, in the United States. Well, it's great to be here. Our Catholic faith is so beautiful, but so little known. And now we have this opportunity to reload the precious heritage of our Catholic faith. We are based upon a resource that was made publicly available by the Joan of Arc Catholic Parish in Indianapolis. We're still in lection, lecture, lesson number one. And this time we are to talk about creation. So please be ready. We have some uh, text to share. Here we are. Okay, here it is. In the beginning, God, in the very beginning of the Bible, names the creator. Who is God? All people have ideas about God, what he is like and who he is. But all we can really say about God and believe about him is what he has revealed about himself to us. Anything else is simply speculation. I think this is important. When we study, for example, pebbles, stones, microbes, plants, animals, either large or small, we don't ask them to reveal to us their secrets. For example, we take the microscope or the telescope and we simply go to the thin and study it. It is not the same with God. And the very reason for that will be apparent in a few chapters. It is all the same in this regard. It is all the same as what do we encounter when coming to know a person? What's the best way to know a person? It is not about measuring, simply measuring the person. You know, to take note of the height or the weight of the person, that's information. But would we say that we become a person simply because we know the chemical elements that are part of their body? It is in that relationship, it is in contact with the person, it is in dialogue, entering into a relationship with the person that we come to know him or her. Well, it's all the same with God. God is not a thing to be put under the scrutiny of the microscope or the telescope. And what you encounter when you enter into a relationship, for example, friendship with a person, a human person, what you encounter as what the person is like, what she prefers, or what he likes or dislikes. This is the kind of things that we come to learn in entering into a relationship with the person. God 
is no less than that. One day, that friend of yours tells you something very intimate, something very deep at the bottom of her heart. And you feel this person is sharing with me something that clearly is so important to her or to him, of course. She is letting me know something that most probably many people have not the slightest idea. This is a revelation. It's all the same with God. The word revelation, it is not that mysterious after all. All we can really say about God and believe about him is what he has revealed about himself to us. Anything else is simply speculation. From God's self-revelation comes what we know and believe about him. Now, what is a revelation when we enter into a relationship with a person, with a human person? Well, probably it's something that shows up in the course of a dialogue. Okay, if you change the relationship, most probably the kind of revelation also changes. It's only natural. It also changes. For example, if you come to know very, very closely an author that lived in the 18th century, there's no possibility of entering to a dialogue with that person. But that particular fact does not prevent you from coming to know how the person was like. It is a different kind of knowledge. Or more correctly, I should say, it is a different means of revelation. It's all the same with God. Self-revelation coming from God is not necessarily the same thing you have with your friends, be they uh, male or female, small or of an old age. These beliefs and revealed truths about God lead to our faith in him and faith is essential if we are to be in a relationship with God. The book of Hebrews, actually the letter to the Hebrews in the Bible tells us Without faith, it is impossible to please God. You encounter this in the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 6. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he, is, he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. This information is really useful. Useful in order to your eternal life. Faith begins with God and comes from him. God wants us to know him. And from the beginning, he has revealed himself in many and various ways. For example, he makes himself known in creation. You know, 
this is like coming to know a painter from his paintings or coming to know a writer from his books, his letters, his writings. When we look at the beauty of the earth and all created things, as well as the splendor of the sky above and all living things, we learn something about God who created all that exists. We can learn about God through the study of philosophy. This is another way, another kind of dialogue, if you like, which means literally love of wisdom. The ancient philosophers all concluded that there must be a God who is eternal, infinite, all-powerful, all-knowing, and the source of all things. In a special way, we know about God through the desire in our hearts. Deep down, we know there must be a God who loves us and cares for us. The desire in our hearts was put there by God himself because he wants us to look for him and to come to know him. Saint Augustine, an early bishop of the Catholic Church, once wrote, O oh God, our hearts are restless until they rest in you. In this dense paragraph, we are told about three ways, three different ways God has made use of in order to provide knowledge of himself to us. Creation, we have it here. Then ancient philosophers, the study of philosophy, loving wisdom, deep questions, deep reasoning, leads to God. And also, the desire in our hearts. Three different ways God has used consistently. They are not the only ones. But these three, God has used consistently to make himself known to us. And why? Just because he loves us. And he wants us to come to know him and to love him, and to obey him, and to be with him, not only for a while, but for all eternity. May the Lord bless you. Next time, we will continue speaking about the different ways God has revealed himself. Again, God bless you. <laughs>